How you doing? This is BK from ManForWars.com and Man for Wars Media, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents worldwide offline locally teach kids to look, talk, and feel great, and to help the same people locally discuss and share great info they find online, offline, as better people making better places to live, getting better politicians and results, and connecting with their neighbors, not just like minds online, often in digital ghettos these days, much more censorship and crackdowns, but connecting with your neighbors, not lying, looking each other in the eye, sharing info, if it's stupid, laugh, if it's smart, enjoy, and therefore organizing where you live to make sure you can push back against some of the bad policies, like with respect to this COVID-19 pandemic, this bad COVID-1984 novel coronavirus scare we're all going through. And see the description below for more on how we beat swine flu last time and how you can beat this new flu where you live today too. And if we all share Patriot best practices, we don't get our mantis or panties in a bunch because we really want to win and beat these people. This is not trivia because this is not trivial. Uh, we do more than that then uh, we should be able to, which is why they're working so hard to control us because we have a chance to beat them. So let's take it, use it, and win and chill out. And, and there you go. Um, and on that, um, this video is called, Is BitChute Really British Intelligence as the Main YouTube Alternative? Is BitChute Really British Intelligence as the Main YouTube Alternative, right? Now I'll confess, I use BitChute a lot. Um, BitChute is my other platform. YouTube has censored and deleted many of my channels. YouTube, I get to a few hundred subscribers and they find a reason to whack me. It takes eight minutes. I get three emails within eight minutes and gone, sometimes over the trans kids issue or whatever, uh, when I'm trying to save them and, and, and whatnot by using actual doctors, not picking on regular trans people or even trans kids, but just putting out a different idea. And then I get three emails within eight minutes, according to my Gmail timestamp, YouTube account gone. Uh, and this is about five or six different accounts gone when I get to a certain few hundred subscribers. And uh, now I'm at 59 on YouTube, not 59,000, 59, not 5,900, 59. Um, when before, um, um, just a few months ago or last year or whatever, uh, the channel had gotten up to about seven, 800 subscribers and then bang, gone, right? Um, so censored shadow ban on YouTube. So I appreciate BitChute as an alternative. However, I have had my suspicions about BitChute for a while, and I'll go through some of these issues. So, um, so BitChute really became big fast, right? It really became big fast as the alternative to YouTube. I know there's a bunch of stuff out there. Vimeo, they also censor. There's Minds, there's limits on that. I've looked at other platforms. DLive, great, except they delete your stuff after a day or two. Um, you know, and there's others, uh, Brighteon, Mike Adams work with Natural News, but it takes a while for them to approve you or whatever. It's some sort of complication there. Um, so there aren't that many real alternatives, right? Now you could mention there's others, but I've looked around myself and I found that besides YouTube, BitChute is maybe the second best platform uh, and then the rest have some issues, right? Hopefully there's more and hopefully BitChute is for real and does a great job, but I'm going to show you why it might not be. So. Um, BitChute became a, the really big place to be. It became the other place to be. You had uh, Styx Hexenhammer, you know, a famous vlogger uh, promoting it. You had uh, many other people starting to get shadow banned and deplatformed and demonetized on YouTube promoting BitChute. So it became the place to be for everybody who wants to reach everybody, right? Not YouTube, where you can literally supposedly reach everybody, say for the censorship and so on. But the other place to reach everybody else who's having trouble reaching each other and, 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 and others on YouTube. So was that a coincidence or was that directed? Were we directed towards BitChute because I'm going to go there because so-and-so's there, so-and-so's there, James Corbett's there, you know, uh, Sticks is there, other people are there. Is that why I'm going there? Dave Rubin's there. So I want to go there because that's where all the other patriots and free thinkers and free speakers are going, right? But was that a plan to say, okay, YouTube, no, fine, bitch you. There is where you are going to go. And that's going to be the one that we control as the sort of false opposition, right? And they do a decent job, like a lot of false opposition does a decent job, but they might be false opposition. And I'll get into more of that. Um, so <clears throat> was it organic or was it directed, our interest in building up bitch you, right? Um, so... Um, the second point is patriots worried about censorship are grateful for a new platform. I was, I'm sure you are if you're a BitChute fan, a creator or viewer, um, and so on. But who is behind it to trust? Because that's important, right? If we're all going to be trusting this new platform, we're going to say YouTube, evil, Google runs them, censoring people, blah, 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 no problem. BitChute, dun, 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 dun. here is the new platform. We won't do that. We are free speech. You can trust us. Okay, so who are you? Right? Who are you to trust? Right? 
respect the fact that you use technology to build something cool for us, but who are you to trust? And that is what I'm going to go into now. Um, so founder Ray Vahi, as best I can tell, because I've, I've tried to look him up and say, well, is this guy for real, right? Founder Ray, V-A-H-E-Y, right? He's based in the UK. He's based in, in England, right? And I think the British Empire never lost after World War II. I think that they just rebranded and they still run the world, right? Now they got other allies, the Vatican this, the Jewish mafia that, the Italian mafia this, and the Vatican, the, the different mafias, the British mafia, whatever, 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 right? And they work with other elitists around the world, right, to, to sort of run the world. But I do think it's the British Empire. I think the British Empire never lost. They ran the world to World War II. Then they rebranded with their Royal Institute for International Affairs, which is their sort of think tank of two, 3,000 of the British UK political elite, and their satellite groups, the Council on Foreign Relations in the, uh, in, in the US, with their two, 3,000 top uh, media, intellectual, political, business elites, and the Council of Chief Executives in Canada with their top and so on, and the one in Australia. and the one, So they've got these satellite organizations that came out of the RIIA in England, right? And you've got the Queen. Who's the Queen? Not the Queen of Spain, Queen of Thailand, Queen of this, Queen of that, but the Queen. We know we mean the Queen of England, right? Even though there are many other queens out there. Commonwealth countries, her face on half the money in the world, like rulers used to do, to tell people in their kingdom who was really in charge, remind them. Um, and, um, and she's the worldwide head of Freemasonry. That's sort of accepted that the Queen is the international head of, of Freemasonry, the secret sort of, uh, you know, a society um, that, that supposedly is a, a key uh, part of running the world, right? So I do think it's the British Empire behind this, right? And that's why I think you can blame other groups. You can say this, you can say the Americans, you can say the Jews, you can say the whatever, but I think it's the British Empire, right? I think they've got the money. I think they've got the guns. I think they've got the, 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 the manpower. And, uh, and I think that they're behind it. And so a lot of bad stuff happens in England first. I remember we were all shocked. London has 4 million cameras on the streets. That's crazy. A few years later, Toronto has 4 million cameras in the streets. New York has 4 or 5 million cameras on the streets. Everywhere has millions of cameras. It's, it's just a lot of stuff happens there first, right? Um, as they do stuff to their own people and they export it to the world, though there are different models as well. They'll do stuff sometimes in the third world, test it there, you know, and then bring it over to the first world. There's different models, but they certainly do a lot of stuff in England that seems crazy that later shows up and screws other people in the Western world especially, right? Um, so founder Ray Vahi is based in the UK, right? But that wouldn't be enough. I'm th there are some patriots in the, in the United Kingdom, patriots in England, who I would respect, who put themselves out there, who, uh, you know, consistently demonstrate that they are pro-free speech, that they are pro-freedom, and so on, right? But um, Ray Vahi uh, doesn't do that, right? He doesn't do that, right? You can compare Ray Vahi to the founder of Gab Social Media, G-A-B Social Media, which I recommend. The founder of Gab is, uh, is Andrew Torba, right? Andrew Torba is the founder of Gab Social Media. And Andrew Torba puts himself out there. He's on Gab. He's Gabin. Um, he, he, you can follow him. You can hear from him just about every day. He does interviews. He was on uh, the Alex Jones show recently on, on April 22nd, 2020. Uh, he was on there for a half an hour, 20 minutes or whatever, talking about how he's going to try and compete with Zoom, the Chinese teleconferencing platform, to give people another alternative besides sort of Chinese communist technology to use where you are on this platform talking to each other. But it may also be sending information back to communist China for them to sort of, you know, uh, control us and so on, right? So. If you look at the founder of Gab, Andrew Torba, very much committed to free speech, very much committed to freedom, very much committed to giving uh, people in general and patriots an alternative platform, he does a great job putting himself out there and saying, this is me, this is what I look like, it's me, my wife, my daughter, we're definitely optimistic, definitely pro-freedom, happy to talk to you, happy to listen to you, happy to improve on what we do, you know, that's what we do at Gab, right? So that's the Gab social media platform, right? Now, um, if you compare Gab founder Andrew Torba, I'm not saying everybody has to be the same or like this, but if you compare sort of supposedly pro-free speech, pro-freedom advocates to each other, you can see who seems to be more pro-free speech and pro-freedom and better at it and more open about it than others, right? And you can, you can, you can make your decision accordingly, right? And um, when it comes to that, when it comes to Andrew Torba, um, you know, if you compare him to Ray Vahi, Ray Vahi rarely speaks, right? 
I, I, you, he rarely speaks. You don't hear from him on BitChute. You don't see him advertised. You don't say, hey, it's me, Ray. Hope you're having a nice day. Hope everything with BitChute's going okay. You know, you don't rarely speaks. Can't really contact through customer service much. You know, hard to, you know, get in touch with, right? Um, and I wanted to figure out BitChute early, right? So um, I, I found, I heard one short interview, I think one or two, but one short interview that I remember with, I believe it was James Corbett. Now, James Corbett does good work. James Corbett puts himself out there, right? He's <clears throat> an American or Canadian expat who's now living in Japan and for the last uh, 11, 12 years or whatever, he's been putting out really good work, right? Really good shows, really good videos, really good MP3 shows, really well sourced. Here's all the sources for what he does. So James Corbett is a patriot worth trusting. He's got a very measured, easygoing style, right? And he interviewed Ray Vahi about BitChute because he was one of the people going, well, we can't trust YouTube, um, but uh, BitChute is supposedly going to be pro-free speech and not censor at all. And uh, so it's better than, than being censored only on YouTube. So even if you're still on YouTube, uh, you know, put stuff on BitChute too. And if you ever get kicked off of YouTube, at least your stuff is still on BitChute, right? And so, um, so Corbett wanted to investigate. And Corbett's big enough to actually get Ray Vahi's attention and do an interview. But in that interview, it was annoying as hell because Ray Vahi was in some area, sort of outside-ish, right? Couldn't really see, hear him that clearly. A bunch of birds chirping in the background. And I remember being really annoyed um, at, at hearing this interview because he said a lot of the right things and you know, seemed like a nice enough British guy um, in sort of a 20 minute, you know, half an hour interview with James Corbett and um, said, yeah, committed to free speech. We know YouTube censors. We have BitChute. It's good stuff. It's a blockchain, peer to peer technology, blah, 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 blah. OK, cool. Right. Um, but we haven't seen or heard from him much since. So is he just being careful? Well, wait, I'm in the UK. Uh, there's a lot of censorship and crackdowns going on. You know, our government and cops are acting crazy, so I better keep a low profile. That makes sense. And it's either makes it makes sense or it's making excuses to make sense. Or is he really not for real and he's not putting himself out there or his team, the BitChute team out there very much interacting with their, their users and, and saying, hey, this is who we are. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you not like it? How can we improve? And so on. That's not happening much, right? So I do think that that makes, uh, makes BitChute suspect. And I got all my stuff there. So all my stuff's gone. If they delete me, if they press delete, just like if we're in the matrix and they go, boom, gone, right? Could happen, right? Um, but, you know, hey, we, we, need to, we need to have some answers. We need to, we need to have some uh, improvements. We need to make BitChute better and better to attract more and more people from YouTube and other platforms over there. And that doesn't seem to be happening uh, as consistently um, as, 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 as it should. Now, you may say out there, well, what's your problem? Are you a programmer? Are you doing it? Are you, what are you making? It's like, totally understand. Fair enough, right? I'm, I'm happy for the platform. I still use it, right? But there are some issues, right? Um, and, and I think these are fair concerns, right? If you don't think so, please let me know. If you do think so, hey, maybe reflect them. Maybe we can improve on it. Uh, and improve on our communication with the people that are supposed to be helping us communicate to each other and to the rest of the world, right? Um, the next point is on uh, BitChute's technology, right? Now they've got uploads, right? But those uploads take a long time to process before you can publish them, right? Um, and, 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 and so you can upload a video, right? And the uploading takes whatever time, whatever your internet connection is to send the bits and bytes this way and that way, right? So fair enough. But then there's the processing. Now on YouTube, you know, as soon as you upload something, it's right there. There's no processing after that. The uploading is video, goes from here, now it's there. And now if you either, you either automatically published it as soon as it's uploaded or you press, you check it, you make sure everything's okay. It's in the right form. You fill out the description, you make sure everything's fine. And then you press publish, right? But it's something you can do right away. With BitChute, you can't do that as many of you well know, right? You upload it, and then it takes time to process it. It takes time for the program to kind of digest it, figure out what it is, put it in a format, and then when it's ready to publish, you know, then, you know, it's ready. You can play it, check. Okay, so it's working. No problem. Looks good. I want to publish this to the rest of the world, right? Um, but, you know, as, as you might know, I certainly do, some never do finish processing. Some are just stuck there. They're just stuck saying processing, right? They never do finish, right? And I've had to wait hours or even days for video to be ready, right? I've had to wait hours or days, right? Um, some just are ne never processed. They're just stuck in processing mode. It just still says processing, right? Others happen fairly quickly, but some take hours or days. So 
This means um, <clears throat> that you can't react to news and interest in real time the way you can with YouTube, right? And other platforms that have that similar format instead of upload, processing, wait to process, my process might be 15 minutes, might be 15 hours, might be 15 days, might be 15 years, who the hell knows, right? Um, it's all arbitrary, right? Some process fast, and it's like, okay, this processed great, right? Some not at all, don't even do it at all, right? I've got some videos, you've heard two videos yesterday, right? One short one, processed in half an hour. One longer one, I'm on my fifth upload, right? Now I'll get into that in a second, but um, <clears throat> you know, so, so you can't react to news and interest in real time, right? Something happens and you're like, oh my God, I want to get on the internet and I want to say, you know, my piece about this, right? It's this shooting, this bombing, this crisis, this whatever, or this fun thing or this celebrity thing or this you know, event or even for fun stuff, right? Even this, hey, the, you know, um, um, MTV Music Awards were just over. Here's what I thought was cool. Here's what I thought was good or bad, right? You can't react in real time as well as you can with live streaming, which BitChute doesn't have, or uh, YouTube, where you can say, okay, so 20 minute video, these are my thoughts on this, it'll take 20 minutes to upload, and then at the end of that, boom, it's available for the world to see, right? Now, obviously censored and so on, shadow banned, demonetized, that's going on to a lot of key information on YouTube, so that's not good. But on BitChute, it's even worse, because it takes a long time to process, right? And, you know, um, when it comes to that, is that a plan or is that coincidence, right? Because it hasn't changed much, right? It's, so it hasn't changed. The technology hasn't changed much. So is that a plan to make it so that, you know, it's it's arbitrary and some videos process fast, even some videos the same size and the same length process fast, others take forever? Or is that a plan or is that coincidence, right? That's something that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious about. And uh, on my recent video, <clears throat> I'm currently uploading my fifth copy of a video made 24 hours ago. So 24 hours ago, so as of this recording of this one, right? And who knows when this will be up, if this will be up. Um, but um, I'm currently uploading my fifth copy of a video made 24 hours ago, right? Um, it says here, COVID-19 pandemic. There is no, quote, new virus. This is Bill Gates, quote, Event 201 drill training exercise. And it's got, was there foreknowledge of the, of the pandemic? Questions for Corbett. And that's a Corbett Report bit shoot episode. And then the Event 201 scenario, it's got centerforhealthsecurity.org and scenario. And that, in about an hour and 29 minutes, um, I talk about how there is no new flu. This is all, all a drill that launched in October of 2019. And we're living through that drill. They got all the major stakeholders ready. Then they had this Event 201 scenario planning tabletop exercise where they got all the local kind of minions involved in pushing this. And then they get everyone kind of active on this drill. They totally control everything. They don't release a real bioweapon. They don't release a real this. It's not really acting like that. Infection rate's super low, but crackdown super real and blah, blah. And they get everybody corrupted and everybody going along with it. And they get, you know, everybody worried about their jobs inside and outside government. So don't say anything. And they get everything kind of organized to their satisfaction. Then later on, we're all trapped in our homes. Maybe they can whack us with something or other, right? But right now, they're probably just whacking a few isolated old people at, at nursing homes since they're in favor of euthanasia anyway, right? A lot of these same people are in favor of passing euthanasia laws. So they say, don't see old people anymore. You might kill them. Then they take the old people, put a pillow over the head, test their blood for coronavirus. There are many kinds of coronaviruses, according to that theory, according to official sources. And so the tests themselves have false positives, or they say... Well, they died and they tested positive for COVID-19. Doesn't mean they died from it, right? They can kill you with anything or you can die from anything. But if they take your blood and they go, hmm, yep, there's definitely some coronaviruses or coronavirus-related genetic material or antibodies to flu uh, uh, viruses in here, you know, whatever the, the test is, as opposed to the specific Koch postulates isolated this unique virus with that four-step process, blah, 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 right? So I won't get into all that because that video may or may not be up. But but my point about all that is that I believe this is a drill and I believe that this is you know challenging a lot of the mainstream narrative. And I'm currently uploading my fifth copy of this video made 24 hours ago, right? So 24 hours ago, uploaded it, right? Then that was still going. I was like, okay, so this thing might never process. Upload another copy, right? Then another copy. Then today, one more copy. Then this morning, then another copy. And then, and right now, there's another copy. It's the fifth copy. 
right? It just says COVID-19 pandemic and then Redux, Redux 1. It says uh, Redux and then Redux 1 and Redux 2 and Redux 3 and Redux 4. So this is my fifth copy of this video that I'm trying to upload right now. And, and, and so you can see the issues that I'm having with this platform and I think many others may be having. Now, some people may not be. Right. That's why I think it might be British intelligence, because some people might not be having any problems at all. Right. I'm definitely a problem reaction and solution kind of guy where I'm definitely like, you know, what can we do? It's like, OK, that's not an answer. That's a question. Right. You're not just bitching like you're seriously asking me, what, what can we do? Because I can lay it all out for you. Right. No problem. I can say this, this, this and this and this. And you can't argue. You can't troll me. You can maybe ask some questions. We can maybe nuance it. But if you actually want to know what to do about this COVID-19 pandemic, this bad novel COVID-1984 virus, the threats to our health, our freedom, uh, our rights, our money, our future, the Great Depression, the political system, connecting with your neighbors, blah, blah, all that stuff. No problem, right? I can help with that. If you just want to fuss and throw, you know, a tantrum, like is this fashionable in many ways, online and offline, then no problem. It's just it's not my thing. But if you actually want to know what to do, how to beat these people, that, you know, I've had co-signed by tons of people online and offline where they just kind of go, even if we can't say or do anything, because, you know, just, you know, you know, you know, you know, it's supposed to be a mess, you know, you know, you know. It's probably better that we let him because he, he can clearly, he knows what to do, right? So they would censor me more. Yeah, uh, there's no doubt about that, right? Because they don't want, they don't want people entertained but they certainly don't want people active, you know, stopping their plans. And so that's sort of what I do. Uh, and, and, and you can see the, the description in this video or other videos below. You can read the simple plan, how we beat swine flu last time. You can go, yep, it's probably among the best solutions out there. And uh, yeah, you can do what you want with it. But you're not going to go, that's stupid. You're crazy. That'll never work. Nobody ever does that, right? I know that's a bad idea. You know, no, we shouldn't do that. Nobody should hear about that. Nobody ever, ever, ever says that right <clears throat> now I'm not going to go on I'm not going to go on pulling my pud I'm just giving you an explanation for why they might be giving me more trouble as part of this processing process than they would give other people that's all um now um so um you know when it comes to this um you know it's happened many times to me right many times over the last uh you know you know a few uh, last a couple of years been on BitChute or whatever um, and I use a Logitech, I used to use a Logitech C920 webcam, C920, right? Arguably the most popular webcam in the world, right? And so very standard format, standard MP4s, either 1080p or 720p, right? Just standard MP4s from a standard Logitech webcam, right? And now, since the C920 finally died, I use a C922 webcam, which is also basically the same as a C920 a couple of more bells and whistles, but it's basically the same thing. Again, standard MP4 files. So there's no there's no special, well, you're using weird technology, you're using this, you're using that. No, right? Some stuff I make videos and I use AVI files, right? If I use a, a VSDC video maker, right? I'll use an AVI file, which is the oldest sort of technology out there and it's pretty standard, right? Or I can use MP4s or move files or whatever, whatever they accept, right? No problem, right? But, um, but, um, but, but otherwise, when it comes to vlogs like this, it's just a basic MP4. So it's not like I'm using some screwy technology that's like not, you know, it's like weird. It's like, no, it's just, the, it's the normal stuff that, that everyone uses, everyone's supposed to use. It's not some proprietary, some unique thing, some whatever. I'm using, you know, uh, uh, Linux instead of Windows or, or whatever, right? It's just, it's typically normal average stuff. I'm not even that much of a techie. I'm more of a pundit, philosopher, analyst, activist, journalist, artist, businessman kind of guy. But in terms of technology, I'm not like, well, I replaced everything with Linux. It's like, that's not my thing, right? I respect it. Tremendous respect for people that can do smart things. I'm alpha male. We need to do this. Or bravo male. Great job. Like, I don't care. I'm not jealous. I'm not pissed. I'm not bitching or snitching or nothing. I'm just saying that's not my thing. I'm just using standard stuff. And, and yet I'm still getting pushed back from this technology, right? So um, my point on that is could they, being the they, the they in quote in quotation marks, use processing time to evaluate or censor or mess with certain videos, right? So while that video is processing, maybe they just, you know, it's up, it's uploaded somewhere, right? It's like I uploaded this and then I, 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 I closed it, says I finished uploading and then click the, you know, finalize upload 
and then it's uploading, and then it says processing, right? So while it's processing, somebody could be taking a look at it, right? Somebody could be taking a look at it and be like, okay, so this is processing, and this is what it is, and this is, you know, what we think of it, and this is what we'll do with it. We'll either process it fast or process it slow or not process it at all, or we'll evaluate it or we'll censor it or we'll mess with it or we'll hide it. We'll do something with it, right? You know, imagine if it, you know, if like on YouTube, if you, if you took, you had a half an hour YouTube video, right? And then it took a half an hour, an hour or three hours to process it, right? You could have people at YouTube, uh, Joe and Jane YouTube, to sit there and watch it. Hmm, okay, this is the video. That's it. Here's what we'll do. We'll add a couple of things to this video saying, okay, hide this, hide that, change this search term, do this, flag this with something, so and so. So once the hits publish, it won't reach everybody in the normal YouTube universe, right? BitChute could be doing the same thing during the processing time, right? Possible. For sure? I don't know, but definitely possible, right? And it's arbitrary. Some upload fast. Obviously, shorter ones often upload faster, right? That sort of makes sense in some general sense. But even longer ones, even different size ones, it's arbitrary. It's not consistent. Well, this is the technology, and this is it, and it takes, if your video's an hour and a half, then it takes, you know, uh, an hour to process. If your video's half an hour, it takes 20 minutes to process. If your video's, you know, it, it's not standard. It's arbitrary, right? And that's very strange. Um, and you could say, well, it's about peer-to-peer, -peer, how many people are on there, how many this, how many that, whatever, whatever. Totally understand. But I'm also advocating that it might be something else too, right? So if you got better explanations, since we all want to use this platform, we all want to make it a good platform for us and to reach everyone and to fight online censorship, then by all means, contribute to this conversation. But we shouldn't just be like, well, I'm just happy. You know, it's okay. I don't want to get thrown off there too. Then I'll have nothing to do and no one can see me. And I can't see you, right? I get it, right? But at the same time, we're in a serious fight right now. This COVID-19 pandemic, COVID-1984, bad novel, coronavirus, we're all living in right now, this global martial law where the World Health Organization and UN, essentially the world government is telling every single government in the world what to do. Under these type of conditions, you know, like we, we, we have to come up with the best ways to fight back and the best ways to reach each other to, to help each other fight back otherwise we're, we could just make excuses and we're all screwed right so that's why i'm making this video um now um another point on this is uh the video organizing right the organizing of bit shoot videos compared to youtube which is the gold standard right it is the google now owned youtube in terms of um video organizing in terms of video quality you know, in terms of whatever, whatever, it is generally speaking like the world standard, right? And I haven't seen platforms better than that. And um, and that's a little strange. I hope there are there are more that are actually better than YouTube, right? Not just on censorship, but on technology, on user interface, on making it easy. The reason YouTube got so big and so popular is because it's so fun and easy to use, right? If I want to look for more Patriot stuff, BitChute for sure. If I want to look for some generic junk, basketball videos or whatever, just you know, whatever mainstream stuff, keep an eye on it. YouTube's great for that, right? That's why people will spend hours and hours and hours on YouTube, right? So when it comes to video organizing, um, BitChute is very bad compared to YouTube, right? If you look at a standard computer screen page, right? Your 15 inch, 17 inch, whatever inch laptop, computer screen or whatever, right? When it comes to, 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 to BitChute, you can see like four videos per page, right? And they're just one on top of each other. One, two, three, four, right? Maybe three and a half, you know, depending on how big your screen is, right? This video, there's the image, nice large image and the title, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, right? So three or four per page. With YouTube, you can see 24 per page, right? The thumbnails are smaller, true. So sometimes the image isn't as uh, as, as as cool to see as BitChute's larger thumbnail. But you get to choose from 24 videos, right, on the screen. And you get to see kind of a, a, a broader idea of what the, 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 the video maker, creator, vlogger, or whatever is putting out there, right? You get to see, you know, all that, right? You get to see, um, you know, the whole, a whole selection of, of videos, right? And so um, that's really, really, um, you know, that's really, really cool, right? And you get to choose and you get to get an idea of the flavor of what that creator is like, right? So with the 24 videos per page on YouTube, it's way better than the four per page on BitChute, right? 
Um, and, and you can scroll, you can organize, you can say, well, most popular, you can organize by this. You can scroll down easily on YouTube. You, you know, you can't see necessarily all the videos on a YouTube page. Maybe they, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds like some people have made, right? But it's still pretty easily to kind of, you know, look up 150, 200, or 24 by 24 by 24 by 20. You can look through 200 videos on YouTube if you just scroll down fairly easily, right? On BitChute, with only three and a half or four per page that you can see, you've got to scroll down a mile to find stuff, right? Like anything that I posted since the beginning of this COVID-19 pandemic, right? Like, which is just, it's now um, um, <clears throat> April 23rd, since sort of, uh, say, uh, early March, right? Say a month ago, month a month and a half ago, right? If the videos that I posted at the start of this pandemic a month and a half ago, are a mile down the page. So if you're just looking for month old stuff from me, you gotta scroll, 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 and it'll keep scrolling and you'll eventually find it. I've done it myself, right? Uh, to look for old stuff, to organize old stuff, to, to, to recategorize it somewhere else so it's easier to find or whatever. I've scrolled down to look for stuff, but it takes forever to scroll all the way down. So if you're looking for stuff, um, you know, of mine from a month, month and a half ago, you'll have to scroll down for a minute, two minutes, right? If you're looking for stuff of mine for, from a year ago, you may have to scroll down for half an hour, right? And so that's not the best way to organize it, right? Um, and so so that's an issue. Um, now, we can we can make excuses, uh, or we, but we can also say it's been a year or more. Why aren't there any real improvements to the platform? Right. It always says, you know, around 50, 55 percent funded, you know, whatever, in terms of what they're looking for, in terms of money. Right. Um, so so why haven't there been any real improvements to the platform and why not open source it to some developers to say, look, we need some help with this. We're in a battle for free speech here. This is not just about patriots. This is about artists. This is about anybody that wants to express themselves freely without censorship. So why not open BitChute up to more um, uh, developers? who can say, we can improve this, we can improve that, we can improve this, we can improve that, we can get good user feedback, and we can all help to work to make this a better platform. Why not, right? I think that would be ideal. Now, I don't know the technical side of this. I've worked with some developers before in sort of more of a marketing role and an organizing role, but but not in a, in a coding role. So if there's serious coders out there that can break down why you, you can or can't or should or shouldn't do this, I defer to them, no, no doubt, right? I'm still, it's not stupid. You can, you can explain it to me, you know, unless you're stupid, you're, you're smart. You can explain it to someone who's not as smart or as knowledgeable in ways they can understand, hopefully, typically, mostly, right? Not just lie to them. But if you have some reasons why you can't get more people working on improving the BitChute platform to make it better for everyone to use, then, uh, then, then, you know, put it out there. But otherwise, I think that's something that we should do. Um, so, um, you know, um, another point is uh, the Discus comments section, right? The Discus comments. Now, Discus is supposedly independent from BitChute, right? And, and and I've heard other people say they tried to talk to BitChute about it and say, why can't you get a, 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 a comments platform that you own, that's BitChute's own, not one that's that censors more, that's foreign to BitChute, that you're sort of paying to use, you're, you're, you're buying or leasing their technology to use your video sharing service and their unique comment platform software, right? So, uh, but Discus, D-I-S-Q-U-S, um, their comments, um, you know, um, they hide notifications from me, right? They hide notif notifications from me. They hide replies to comments I leave, right? Um, you know, and I've got to check back on old videos to find them, right? So I'll leave a comment on BitChute video, right? Then I'll go back to look at that comment. Maybe I'll want to copy my little pay copy and paste something that I that I, that I put there with some new stuff at the top to say, hey, good video, here's my unique comments on it. By the way, here's a plan to beat this COVID-19 pandemic. See below, so I wanna copy that below part. I gotta go back and check my old videos to find them. And then I find people have responded. Some people can tell I'm sincere, not stupid, not messing with people, don't want pe people to mess with me, mess me up, so I'm a mess, messing with people, don't get into that stuff. And, and so um, I have to check on videos where I've left comments to, to, to find replies to my comments, as opposed to Discus notifying me with that little bell in the corner saying, you know, uh, oh, there you go, you've got a reply to your comment. So, okay, cool. And when I have found them and I have replied, I've had good little conversations with people 
about, you know, comments, not just snarky, bitchy this, or uh, kill all the Jews that, or whatever. I think the ADL and other, you know, nothing against the average Joe and Jane Jew, right? We were scared of the Jewish mafia, like uh, the average Jack and Jill Black are scared of the Crips and Bloods, um, or the average, uh, you know, Jeb and Jenny American are scared of the CIA, or the average, uh, you know, uh, Jolene and uh, Jawaharlal Chinamen are scared of communist China. Like, there's always sort of groups out there at the top elitists that, that, you know, scare members of their community, right? And so, you know, but, but for the people out there that are putting all the F all the Jews, this and that comments on, you know, I think that's the ADL, which is um, a, a group supposedly fighting anti-Semitism that's actually anti-free speech. They're corrupt, they're scumbags. And I think they put trolls out there to put comments out, right? To spam Patriot message, message boards and comment sections to make them unusable by Patriots, right? They do that to say, see, look, we typed it up and see all the anti-Semitism on there. See how evil those people are. Give us more money, right? And prove our, this is why we need to exist. This is why we need more money. We also inspire copycats, just like, you know, kids after World War II, when the Nazis were, 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 were destroyed, they would sometimes draw swastikas, whatever, in their, in their notebooks, just to be anti-establishment, just to do what they're not supposed to do. Not because they were super Holocaust people, but they're supposed to not, just like kids today, will use the N-word, right? Why? Just because you're not supposed to, right? So same thing, because they'll, they'll inspire copycats to do the same thing. Say, oh yeah, F all the Jews. Say, what do you, are, you, are you a serious critic of it? And, and what they do is they make real critics of Jewish mafia uh, look crazy or stupid or anti-Semitic, and, and they solidify their own ends, right? So that's a lot of what the comments are on, on Patriot bit shoot videos that I see. It's just people, you know, snarkily and bitchily, you know, uh, being sort of anti-Semitic in really stupid ways, as opposed to being really good critics of Jewish mafia power, globalist power, you know, influence, you know, uh, what's going on, you know, uh, that sort of thing, right? There are smart critics out there, right? There are people like Dr. E. Michael Jones, right? And, and others who are smart critics of this. And they're also just people that are just being snarky and bitchy. And they're also people, I believe, who are paid to put comments out there to uh, to mess with us. And I've shut them down with this explanation, right? They've done this, this crazy comment, blah, blah, kill all the Jews, everyone you see, whatever. And then I'm like, by the way, here's my explanation about the ADL, why they do it, how they do it to prove their existence, get money, inspire copycats, make real critics look bad, and, and so on. And this usually stops them and shuts them down. Because once you see my explanation next to those comments, you can see those comments and go, I get it, right? Why would people watch stuff they hate just to shit on it? With tons of internet content, tons of YouTube, BitChute, other videos, video games to play, TV to watch, Netflix, why would you spend half an hour, an hour, two hours to watch something and hate it? Man, this guy sucks. Man, this guy doesn't talk about the Jews. Man, this guy doesn't stand. You should kill all the Jews. It's like, why would you do that with your time? Even if you hated him, why? Right? Why would you watch two hours of this? Why would you watch the Alex Jones show for two, three hours and then go, Bleh. right? So I think they're paid trolls. And when I say that and I post that comment near these other comments on my channel or on other channels, it typically shuts them down. Because if you keep doing that and you see my comment analyzing that, then you look like a paid troll. Look like an idiot who's nothing better to do with your life or an idiot who's either an idiot copycat or a paid troll who's being paid to do that. Nobody else would waste their time on that, right? Um, and so it, it shuts them down, right? It does. It shuts them down. It shuts them down on my page. You can see it. You can go to my recent videos. You can see somebody doing that. Eh, and then I boom. And they don't troll me. They don't argue with me. They don't keep going. They just stop. And they look for somebody some other place. So that's something good to keep in mind and to reflect in your own words out there when you see people paid to pollute patriot message boards in comment sections and make them unusable by people who actually want to talk to each other and actually want to talk about what the video was about not just snarkily bitch about this that and the other including the jews as as many people are wont to do for one bad reason or another and i'm not talking about the people with legitimate critics of mafia power when it comes to communist chinese mafia when it comes to black mafia italian mafia jewish mafia they, nobody, nobody's off limits when it comes to that, right? But just the snarky, bitchy, kill them all shit, that's bullshit from what I can see. And I think it's paid, people are, are paid to do that as opposed to, you know, being reasonable. Or people are copycats when that sort of thing is, is you know, people are paid to type it everywhere and people want to copy it and be cool and they want to appeal to those people who are doing that and so on. So it just creates a big mess 
on BitChute and other platforms. So keep that in mind. I want to add that. Um, but um, but when it comes to this, um, Discus hides my com comments or hides not replies to my comments, and they make me look like a dick who doesn't respond. Right, and so, um, and then I, as I've said, others have complained about BitChute too. So it's not just me, right? You might have noticed some bullshit too. So, um, so definitely, when it comes to Discus and the comment section and hiding notifications, hiding replies to my comments, uh, other people out there, when I type this to them, they say, "Yep, I've experienced the same thing." Right? They've hidden stuff from me. I've been going back and forth with somebody, and then all of a sudden. I don't get it. And I check back three days later. I realized they responded to me 30 minutes after my comment. And it would have been nice to go back and forth with them to just finish a little, you know, polite patriot exchange about the content of video, not just random spamming, snarky, bitchy, blurts to the world bullshit, but actually connecting with each other about what you are both interested in, including the video you watched. That sort of thing is mitigated by discus. And that's something we've got to, um, we've got to uh, sort of uh, deal with. Right. And, um, and so um, when it comes to this, I definitely recommend that, uh, that you take this video in the spirit of this video, which is to improve the platform, right? To improve the platform. Um, is it British intelligence? I think it's very possible. Is it not? Great. Let's prove it, right? By improving the platform and truly making it the number one YouTube alternative for, for, for free speech. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, that's free speech. It's just yucky free speech. But um, but 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 making it um, making it um, a real alternative, a legitimate alternative, right, to YouTube, and and to do that, you know, we've got to reflect some of these concerns. We've got to be positive. We've got to be optimistic. We've got to be whatever. I'm being a bit, um, you know, uh, obnoxious in the title of this video as sort of a clickbait, but I do think it's legitimate. I think my concerns are legitimate, right, and um, and and I think that um, that to prove that I'm wrong, we have to see more done about what is not being done when it comes to bit shoot how come there's no live streaming how come the processing takes so long how come it almost never works how come the damn site hasn't changed even though they're at 50 percent funding for like a year or two years or whatever how come we don't hear from the founders the the, the staff at bit shoot how come they're not engaging with their people how come there's not customer service how come there's not their own how come they're not getting other people involved how come they're not getting all this millions of people around the world who care about freedom and free speech to work with them to make this a true threat and competitor to YouTube by doing what they do, but doing it even better too, right? And that would be ideal. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's 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 it. that's that you know that that's key. And the final thing is I'll say is that online is is sort of uh, fine, right? And it's a great step. And I love the internet. And we all love the internet, right? But the next step is to locally win the offline info war. Right, where online you learn stuff, patriots digest a whole bunch of stuff. They're like, "Wow, this is crazy." I spent, you know, uh, you know, 40 hours last week, you know, on this shit. Right? It's like I worked for 40 hours, and then I got on the internet for 40 hours, and I learned all this crazy shit. It's blowing my mind. Right? The, the goal is to take that information and and meet with other patriots where you live, organize meetings, build friendships over the over a meal, meet every Saturday or meet whatever. Right? And then from there, feel like acting and have meet and greet tables where you live, where you set up a table, you connect with your neighbors, polite patriots, ignore people, ignore you, say hi to people who want to say hi to you, and uh, pass something on like a little a little flyer. For example, these are like 10 per page. We used these last time to beat swine flu, right? Don't get shot. They're cheap. You can print them for eight to 10 cents per black and white page. You just hand them out. Thank you, thank you. People go, huh? Well, okay, fine, put it in their pocket, huh? Sure. Or, oh, what is this? Okay. Yeah. You know, because some people are just busy. They don't want to talk. And other people will come up and talk to you, and you can share posters and flyers and DVDs um, where you live. Um, and you can also put up posters online. If you're locked in solitary, allow it out for an hour a day. Bring cameras, media allowed out to report, and posters and flyers. Drop them off in neighbors' mailboxes, windshields, and so on. Leave them in people's hands. People coming and going. People are very open-minded today, right? And so people are more interested in this. And you can have a whole bunch of websites, you know, on there. You can have, you know, a short explanation. You know, you know, you can see the description below for a new example that I made. You can change the content. There's uh, MS PowerPoint versions there, so you can change the content so it reflects what you want to put on there. Your thoughts, your websites. It's just a simple format, right? You just take a simple format and you do that. And then you can print these cheap. You know, we're all going through an economic uh, recession or depression right now. Um, you know, there's another version of it. If we don't know, we have problems. If we do know, we have solutions. And we like health tips. This is on vaccines. 
and there's exemption forms, and there's some more information. And if you want to take a shot, fine. Then you shouldn't complain if other people don't because this shot works and protects you, so stay out of my body. Because if you believe that shit protects you, go ahead. If it protects you, then don't worry if I get one, and so on, right? So we gave out tons of these. We gave out thousands of vaccine exemption forms to grateful parents running up to us from all over the city, um, all over the place from hours away or whatever. And, and are you guys the vaccine exemption forms? Yeah, can we get two, please? We printed all this stuff out. We used our own money. We took some donations, and uh, we, we, we did a great job. We had a blast with each other. We had a blast with others. You can see vi video examples of that below. Uh, CBC News even covered us. So... My point in saying that is that, you know, with respect to all this stuff, online is fine. It's a great way to connect with people with like minds. It's a great way to see other talented people. It's a great way to be more informed and empowered. But then taking that and digesting all that stuff that we learn into smaller digestible bits of info that pique people's interest, that pique your neighbor's interest, sharing stuff with them, not arguing with them, not yelling at them, not yelling at each other, but saying you want to talk about it, fine. You want to research on your own first, here you go. Take one of these, put it in your pocket, and 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 you know as you'd like. You got you got kids, you got this. I've had friends getting married or, or, or having a baby with their wife, and I'm like, you want know, a party? You want to talk about this? Fine. Not fine. Take this, put it in my buddy's pocket. You and your wife take a look at that later. It's your wife. It's your baby. You want to talk to me about it? Fine. You never do. Fine. But I gave you a chance to 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 think for yourself. Here's something different, and think for yourself. Stupid laugh. Throw it out. Smart, enjoy. Don't worry about this. It's not a glossy, shiny thing that I paid $2 each for. It's one-tenth of a black and white piece of paper that I printed for five cents or eight cents or 10 cents per page. And I, I cut it, had it professionally cut, or I cut it, and now I'm passing them out. And if you don't like it, no problem. If you go like this and throw it away, you know, seconds after I gave it to you, I tried. Tried to give you a chance to think for yourself about something that uh, that that may be of interest to your you, your kids, family, friends, community, and country. You down? Cool. You are not? No big deal, right? I'm not gonna cry. You don't cry. We'll leave it at that. Other people go, hmm. All right, I got a bunch of errands to run today. Maybe I'll check it out when I get home. No problem. Your day, right? A lot of people are like, hmm. I don't know about this. I want to talk to you about it. No problem. We can talk, right? So the the online info war is just to prepare you to locally win the offline info war. So you can connect with your neighbors and then once your uh, your local sheriff or police department and your local city councilors or uh, provincial or state or, or, or federal politicians or your local media, once they all get the idea that everyone there is informed and empowered and is, is pushing for something different, then they reflect that. Then you get your sheriff coming, we're not gonna take away your rights, we're not gonna enforce the lockdown here, that's unconstitutional, that's against the rights, that's against the rights of people, that's not how we wanna live. Well, if they stick their neck out on their own, they might get their head chopped off. But if you make sure your neighbors are informed and empowered where you live, and the general feeling where you live is this is what we want, and you get people you know, talking to each other better, especially when the media makes people interested in the topic, they go, you know, when the media, the media makes you interested, then they're like, okay, sure. You know, sure, I'll take this, right? Because the media is like, yeah, hey, we should all learn about the swine flu or bird flu or this flu or Wuhan flu or, or whatever, right? Um, sure, all right. Then they talk better with each other and you get better uh, people in places to live and policies and politicians and results. And anyway, I want to make that clear. See the description below for more on that. Um, otherwise, um, I do hope this helps. Uh, BK from Amphawars.com. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, get in touch with questions, answers to work together or financial support. Use clips of this or, or repost as you'd like and, and let me know uh, if you'd like. Um, otherwise, on that, I hope this helps and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.